So today I'm in Bellevue, Washington, uh, which is a city I've never been to before. And the reason I'm here is I'm visiting a game developer named Jamie Fristrom. And if you haven't heard of his name, you probably have heard of what he's known for. He worked on a game for a little company called Treyarch called Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube. Uh, specifically, he is the man responsible for the very, very robust swinging physics in that game. So uh, what I thought I would do is I've paid him a visit here in Washington, which is something I couldn't have done without my Patreon backers. And I'm excited to get in there and get his perspective on the new Spider-Man game because he has not played it yet. And I'm very excited to see what he thinks. So I'm gonna hop in. Halfway through uh, Spider-Man 1's development, or several months into Spider-Man 1's development, I wasn't happy with the swinging in Spider-Man 1. It, kind of like flying with cosmetic webs shooting into the sky. I wanted I wanted to feel like Spider-Man. To me that meant, you know, physics taking over and uh, a more visceral uh, experience, like being a, a bob on a pendulum. And I, but I also kind of figured that's going to be really hard to control if you're, you know, if you just have a gamepad. So I, that's when I got the idea of sort of an artificially intelligent sort of assisted thing that's making choices about where to swing from, like would be smart about saying, oh, here's a building corner. Let's attach that to a building corner and swing around it. Now, Jamie took that dissatisfaction with Spider-Man 1 swinging and his idea for how he thought it ought to work, and he began staying late at night at Treyarch, where he was working on the first game, uh, working on a very, very rudimentary prototype of this system. Uh, all the executives and upper management who looked at it, at this little prototype that I put together, said, you know, we cannot change the direction this game is going, you know this late into the project when we've already made a few levels. Uh, and uh, I had to agree, it, 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 it did not show enough promise. But it was so, but when Spider-Man 2 came around, then I had the opportunity to say, hey, can I, can I finish that thing? <laughs> if, you want me to, if you want me to be technical director on this project, I'd really like the opportunity to, to do this. Um, so I did. At that point, Jamie's prototype became the skeleton for how swinging worked in Spider-Man 2, and he was able to bring his Treyarch colleagues on to help him. However, to maximize the chance of this system being successful and to try to ensure that it actually shipped with this mechanic in place, Jamie and his team kept the swinging a pretty well-guarded secret inside of Activision up until the very last second. At the end of this, of this process where we're, you know, we're trying to keep upper management away from it until it's like ready to show. No, don't look at it yet, don't look at it yet. Uh, and then finally, uh, finally, finally, finally we got to that point where it was like, yes, it's ready to show. Now, Jamie's expertise when it comes to swinging games doesn't actually begin and end with the Spider-Man series. I actually first met Jamie back in 2015 when he was working on this game called Energy Hook, which was this one-man indie game project all done by him that was intended to be the spiritual successor to Spider-Man 2. It's why when I played Marvel Spider-Man for the first time, I thought of Jamie immediately, and why once I found out he did not own a PS4 and had not played the game at all, I packed my PS4 Pro in a suitcase and flew to Washington to get his thoughts on it. And with the system all set up and ready to go with a fresh save loaded up, we were almost ready to go, but before we hopped into it, I had one last pair of questions for Jamie, uh, intended to find out exactly how much he knew going in about this new Spider-Man game, and also to get his thoughts on what his criteria are for a good one. What's your personal criteria for a good swinging in a Spider-Man game? Um, a huge thing for Spider-Man 2 was, um, I don't know, you just want your stomach to clench up. Right when you're when you're when you're when you're, when you're at the bottom of the swing, or you're coming around a building, you just you just wanted to, you wanted to, you wanted to feel it in your gut. So you 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 haven't played Spider-Man 2018. What what have you heard about it? I guess um, I, I haven't heard anything about the swing. Really I, interesting. I, I okay, have, I'll hold my tongue. Um, I saw some screenshots where uh, Spider-Man landed next to a pride flag, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Um, uh, I started watching a trailer, it was all about the boss fights, and I sort of like, I have boss fights, whatever, I'm not, you know, not interested. Um, so that's about it. Well, cool. Uh, I guess we can hop into it. I think, I've been thinking about the best way to drop you into it, and I think the thing is, the, the game opens with a little swinging tutorial that I would love to get your perspective on, and then I've also got a save state later in the game where I've unlocked some of the more advanced, um, Mechanics. I don't want to say too much, but but yeah, cool. Right, well, I'll get the capture set up. 
at this point, I'm over the moon excited about the fact that he doesn't even know if there's a swinging system in it. Uh, you can see it in the full interview, but me and Jamie talked a little bit about other later Spider-Man games post Spider-Man 2 and how he was a little bummed to see them sort of revert to a more flying, non-swinging based system. So <laughs> at this point, he has no idea if there's even a swing mechanic in this game, which I, I makes me more excited than ever to get his thoughts on it. So I instruct him to pick up the controller and we get going. Oh, you can go down to new game, I think. SWAT is 1084 at Fisk Tower. All units stand by, warrant is en route. So I was always a fan of the um, of the uh, of the of the hold down. Even though that wasn't really Spider-Man Two, did it? But holding down to to uh, to to swing to swing and then letting go to let go. It always felt more uh, more like my sensation as a, in the real world kind of matched. The sensation on the screen. Um, I uh, I uh, I noticed that there was a what seemed like a crane that I was sure I was going to just whack into, and I sort of magically missed it. And so I'm wondering, um, like we didn't do it on Spider-Man 2, but there was something like that on USM where it, it, where buildings kind of had this natural sort of anti-magnetic thing going on. Hmm. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's that. That felt really good to me, right? When, when that happened, when I didn't hit the crane, um, I was like, yes, look how awesome I am, threading a needle between that crane and the building, even though the game did it for me. I'm finding that uh, that it's, uh, it's either uh, enough like what I'm used to, that it's just sort of coming naturally to me to, uh, to swing around, um, or, or maybe, or, or it's either what, what I'm used to, or it's just, you know, Intuitive. Um, oh, that was cool. The webs at that time did the double. Yeah. I, I liked the I liked where the, the field of view changes. Like um, that was one before I left the Spider-Man three team. I was like all into uh, more dynamic field of view. Now, Jamie was visibly enjoying himself playing this game, and already we were getting his very unique insight into how you build the thousands of small, nerdy, interconnected physics systems that go into building a good swinging game. But I started to wonder whether Jamie truly realized just what a specific love letter Marvel Spider-Man was to the work that he and the rest of his team back at Treyarch did all the way back in 2004. But I also didn't want to push him in any specific direction. I just wanted to sit back and observe. So I waited and that's when this happened. I want, you know what I'm missing is I, I like the, the Spider-Man 2 like charge jump where you, where you hold it down and you can go up like five stories. That, I want that. Oh, uh, what if I told you that that's in one of the skill trees? <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Now the reason I highlight this moment is because it really illustrates something that struck me right away when swinging around in Spider-Man 2018, which is that everything about the swinging, from the webs attaching to buildings, to moves returning from the old game like the web zip and charge jump, to the optional trick system that they've added, uh, all of these things speak to the fact that this game was built with a great deal of reverence for the swinging system that Jamie pioneered for the 2004 game. Spider-Man 2 really is the godfather of good 3D Spider-Man games, and that's something I suspect Insomniac was hyper cognizant of when building the PS4 iteration. For one example of what I'm talking about, here is some footage from one of the very first prototypes of Spider-Man on the PS4 that they showed during a live stream promoting the game. I mean, this is a, a test level that we built. We knew that we had, when we were gonna do swinging, we had to get the size of the world right. We had to get the webs attaching to buildings. And so you start with the simplest world and the simplest buildings you can make. To me, the fact that almost 15 years after Spider-Man 2 came out, one of the first questions people ask about a new Spider-Man game is whether or not the webs actually attach to the buildings. And the fact that you can even hear game developers talk about the importance of that specific component to making a good feeling Spider-Man game 
all of that to me speaks to the impact that Jamie's work 15 years ago had uh, on the entire landscape of Spider-Man games, even in 2018. I could just do this for hours. Right? <laughs> in fact, the old Spider-Man two days and Energy Hook. Yeah. Would have thought. Would have thought I'd be kind of done. A lot of things seem, and you know, maybe some, maybe, 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 maybe it's maybe my memory is faulty, but a lot of these animations and stuff are triggering Spider-Man two nostalgia. Like um, when he hit that top of the arc, and he sort of did a, did a did a bolt upward off the end of the rope. It's like that. I vaguely remember that's <laughs> something James, you know, James did for us back in the back in the day. It has the um, it has the the, the thing uh, that that Spider Man had, where it's just sort of like um, I actually, I mean, I'm I'm not paying attention to where I'm going, and I'm not really picking a destination. Um, I'm not saying, oh, I really want to get to there. I'm just sort of letting the swinging take me wherever it wants to take me. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that, why is that so, why is that so good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's giving me, even though it's vertical, that's giving me the sensation of speed that I was kind of looking for. You're using gravity, get some speed, and then it's channeling you into the... So now that Jamie had gotten a chance to play a lot of the game, uh, I wanted to sit him down and talk to him once more about what he noticed about it, about his overall thoughts about uh, how he thought it related to his work back in the day, and here's what he told me. I, I, I quite liked it, even though you'd think after the number of years I spent swinging around that I'd be kind of done with that. Um, I, I do kind of want to, I do kind of want to sort of like explore that, the, the, the new space and the new, the new technique. I, I kind of, I, and that, that, that was a thing with me. Like every, every time a new Spider-Man came, game came out, you'd hear in the media, just a bunch of people saying, well, it's, you know, it's no Spider, it's not, it's not as good as Spider-Man 2, but I think, I think, I, I almost always enjoyed them, even though they were different. Like, even though even though Ultimate Spider-Man didn't have the sense of momentum, it was more cartoony and jumpy. It was like still fun in its own way. The nosedive um, into the swing is 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 maybe its crowning achievement. I, it, I, um, but also holistically, I just think it just felt good. I think whoever was the swinging engineer on. on Spider-Man 2018 would say that they were, in a way, standing on the shoulders of giants and on the work you guys did in Spider-Man 2 and in particular. Um, do you, do you, can you sort of detect some of that shared DNA and some of that reverence for your game? I definitely felt that, like, the, the, like these guys um, sort of respected the old work and weren't going and, and to try to, you know, reinvent it, um, but, rather, but rather, make, rather, rather improve upon it. Now, as for what Jamie's up to these days, he's still doing game development, but he's turned to a pretty surprising outlet for that, Roblox. Jamie's already published over half a dozen games in Roblox, some of which have been hugely successful, and his newest is a game called Dungeon Life, which is a sort of asymmetrical, randomly generated dungeon crawler where one player plays the hero and all the other players build the dungeon and play as the enemies in that dungeon. Jamie, who is now a father, says that one of the cool side effects of this is making something that his kids can enjoy. So, I mean, something that's kind of gone on my whole life, it's like, when I tell my friends, hey, I'm making this game, you want to play it, they're like, that sounds cool, but, you know, I'm too busy. Um, so, now, and this is really a first for me, Zara liking Dungeon Life and being willing to, willing to play it with me, it's like, yay, I finally made a video game for an audience that I'm connected to. Um, Thank you to Jamie Fristrom for letting me interview him for this video. Uh, if you want to see more of Jamie's recent work in Roblox, just go to Roblox and search for Dungeon Life or for his user profile, Jamie underscore Fristrom. And of course, thank you to my Patreon backers without whom this video literally could not have gotten made. See you next time.